Hey everybody, Darren Garman here with Trot, and welcome to this episode of the Heartland Multifamily Show. The place for all things multifamily. That's pretty good. Practice. You know, we perfect. do that. We do that enough, man. We might actually, you know, look like we know what we're doing. I, I, I write it every day. Like you times. write it every day. So okay. I memorize it. Yeah. Um, so hey, good to have you here. Thank you. Um, and good to have you on this episode. And today we're going to be talking about interest rates. And so uh, if I get a question, geez, I guess I should say, Trot, if I've had a question that's been, I don't know, probably the most frequent question that I've had uh, over the last probably two to three months, um, it's been about interest rates. And so let's kind of set the stage here because you never know when anybody's watching or listening. Um, but before we get into the content, if you like what you hear, if what we resonate with you, uh, make sure that uh, you hit that subscribe button below, leave your comments, we'd like to have some dialogue with you, and make sure you get you know um, access to our past episodes. There's some good content there as well. Welcome to the Heartland Multifamily Show, the shorter, more profitable path to multifamily ownership and investing. So we're recording this in um, late August of 2023. Okay, and as of today, actually, uh, I don't have a copy of the Wall Street Journal with me, but there was an article front page about how interest rates are the highest they've been since 2001. Um, I think a 30-year mortgage is like seven something. Seven and three quarters, or seven and three eighths, or something like that. Anyway, it's over seven percent for a thirty-year mortgage, and it's the highest it's been in um, well, I don't know, almost twenty, well, twenty plus years. Okay, so not under, not surprisingly, the question I get is things like, "Hey, Darren, where do you see interest rates going? Hey, Darren, is this a good time to be buying real estate right now with where interest rates are?" Right. Um, and, and also, what kind of decisions do I need to be making in terms of where do we think interest rates are going to go in terms of maybe properties you already own, what you may want to be thinking of in terms of things like refinancing, pulling cash out, um, maybe doing some improvements, you know, all those kinds of things. A lot of that, as you and I have discussed with people over the last, especially over the last few weeks, has to do with interest rates. And so let's, let's talk about that because... Um, I'm going to name three main things. There we go. There's three. Three main things I think people need to know about interest rates, okay? Um, especially in today's world. So let's talk about number one. First thing you need to know is uh, it's always a good time. Number one, it's always a good time to buy real estate no matter where interest rates are at. Uh, there seems to be a, um, I don't know if I'd call it a feeling trot, or a, um, a belief that you shouldn't be buying property when interest rates are higher, higher. Um, and I would say that no matter where interest rates are, there's always a deal to be found, no matter how high interest rates go. That's what I was, when you, when you mentioned that, that's what I was thinking too, is it, I think maybe there's less property that you're willing to or should purchase, but there's always deals to be found. And at 3% interest, it's you can make a lot more work, mm -hmm. but I think mm -hmm. there's always deals to be found. Yeah. So I had a, um, a quick presentation with a with like a little mastermind group that I'm a part of. And one of the things I talked about was, uh, was that, that look guys, no matter what interest rates are doing, there's always deals to be found. Now, of course, you have to be responsible in terms of figuring all of the financial implications out of borrowing at 7% or 9% or 12% or whatever it is. And you got to make sure all of the math makes sense. But that's really what it comes down to, is it all comes down to math, no matter where interest rates are at. So it's always a good time to be buying. I mean, we bought property when rates were 11, 12, 13%, we bought properties. Um, we bought properties when rates were three and a half percent. So we've gone all over the place. But the thing that has to make sense, no matter where interest rates are at, is the math. The math has got to make sense. So you don't let higher interest rates as they continue to climb stop you 
from getting involved in investment real estate properties. It doesn't have to be multifamily. Of course, we are multifamily guys. It doesn't have to be multifamily, but there's no reason not to, as long as, as long as the math makes sense. And there's always deals to be found. And I would argue as interest rates get higher, there will be more deals to be found because there will be people that we talked about, as we've talked about in our emergency podcast, they're going to be having problems because they weren't factoring in interest rates getting so high, increasing their loan payments. Would you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, and we're seeing that already. And we actually had some mail recently and some other things coming in regarding that that we can talk about at another time. So, so that's number one. It's always a good time to be buying no matter what interest rates are at. So here's number two. Here's number two. Number two is rates are going above 10%. Rates are going to go above 10%. And uh, how do I know this? Well, the truth is, I don't know this for sure. I mean, have, have you seen a crystal ball around the office anywhere? No. No, we, you don't have one. It'd be pretty anyway, sweet, though. It'd be kind of nice, yeah, wouldn't it? would be sweet. You know, so so do, do I know for sure? Do we have a crystal ball? Of course not. So how, how can I say then, well, geez, Darren, how can you say it's going? they're going to go over 10%? Because um, I've been doing this a long time. And looking at the way the economics are right now in our economy, where we're going, where we're headed, where we've been, we're going to be over 10% probably next year sometime. Okay. Um, and so that's, num- that's like part A of number two. Part B is you always need to be a little bit paranoid with where interest rates are going anyway for planning purposes. So you can't be, let me tell you how you can't be. You can't be so optimistic that rates are gonna stay flat or go down that you make real impactful financial decisions on rates staying the same, not going up and being pretty flat. The reason why we have so many companies like the Blackstones of the world that are defaulting on hundreds of millions of dollars of loans right now, and by the way, that's gonna get worse, um, is because they were overly optimistic about the interest rate climate and where interest rates are going. So not only do you need to be factoring in from just being a paranoid uh, and really just being prudent that rates are going to go up and are going to continue to go up, Um, You got to factor that in, but also in terms of the math, getting back to point number one, the math has got to make sense. And we're going to be over 10%. Yeah, I think when you're planning for it too, you, you, you put it in segments where, you know, you see, okay, rates are here right now. Let's look at best case scenario, worst case scenario. And you have to make the worst case scenario work. And if it doesn't, then the deal just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't, then you, then you get into, well, how can we make this work? And then that can get you into trouble. Right. Um, sometimes I can get you into trouble. So when we're projecting out, so we're looking at, we have loans on properties that are coming due years down the road, a few years down the road, right? And when I say coming due, many of them, um, they're not balloon payments, but they adjust and there's margins and there's things. So uh, worst case scenario, we already know what those are going to be. Okay, We already know. Best case scenario, we already know what that's going to be. But the point is we know that. And so we'll do our planning, looking at worst, looking at best, and then we'll do our planning knowing that rates in the near future are not going down. There's not going to be, there, there's no evidence yeah, there's anywhere no, there's no implication. that rates are going no. down. And so in my mind, again, having done this for as long as I've done it, they're going up and we're going to be over 10% in my opinion. Okay. So that's number two. That's number two when it comes to um, interest rates. And then number three, which we've kind of already talked about. So we've talked about, um, you know, so we just talked about rates going over 10% and what kind of planning you need to do with that. We've already talked about is now a good time to be buying with rates going where they are. Okay. Number three, you need to be projecting out now. It's become very apparent. We talked a little bit about this. You need to be projecting out. Banks call this stress testing. Okay. Now, I'm not saying we need to be like banks, but when banks look at loans and when they do their underwriting, they go through what's called a stress test. And what a stress test basically is, is they do worst case scenarios based on where rates are going to go, uh, what rents are going to do, what property taxes are going to do, what insurance is going to do, etc. You need to be doing the same thing with the properties you own now 
and with any of the properties that you plan on purchasing. You need to take it through basically a stress test to see what that tells you. Okay, Rather than being overly optimistic and say, oh, I don't need to do any. This is a great property and it's all going to work out. And, you know, I got to be at lunch in 15 minutes, so I don't have time to do that. Um, you know, you want to be taking them through the stress tests, especially as rates continue to rise because they are going to continue to rise. And so try as we continue to get questions from, you know, our partners and investors and other investors about, you know, where are rates heading? What are you guys doing? Where are you going? What are you recommending? Um, you know, those are the three main things that we are telling our partners and our investors about. We're telling them, look, we're still, look I mean, we're looking at buying stuff, right? I mean, we looked at, um, I think recently we looked at what, two properties, two yeah. or three. Yeah. Right. So, so we're still looking at stuff. We're looking at buying. Um, you know, the second thing that we're, we're doing is we're planning on rates continuing to go up. We think they're going to go up over 10%. And what kind of planning are we doing? Being a little paranoid in that regard, being prudent in my mind in that regard. And then also making sure that we're going through that stress test process with our properties. And this also includes any properties we plan on purchasing. We take them through that stress test, what's kind of worst case, what's kind of best case with interest rates. And as long as the math at least works out, doesn't have to be perfect, right? But as long as the math works out, you know, it's something that we're going to do or we're going to recommend that our investors do. All right, we're going to take a quick break. I hope you're enjoying this episode. I'm going to be having a free webinar coming up. The link's below on how to correctly and with low risk, invest your IRA or 401k in really good multifamily properties. A majority of our investors do this. I do this personally. It's not illegal. Make sure you click the link below. We'd love to have you. Uh, so interest rates. I'd love to get your comment. Try. We'd like to get their comments on interest rates. Where do you think rates are going to go? What kind of planning do you do? What kind of litmus tests do you use when you're looking at properties, um, when you're doing maybe any underwriting or any investing, whether it's passive or active, what do you do? We'd like to hear that information, get that feedback from you in the comments below too. So with this episode, I think I'm going to call this a wrap, Trot, unless you got anything else. I got nothing, huh? All right. So plan on those rates going up. They are going to continue to go up someday. Sometime they'll flatten out. They'll start to come down. But I don't see that happening in the near future. And as long as you make sure the math works out in those scenarios, keep moving forward, whether you're passive or active. Keep investing in those real estate properties that you want to invest in. Just be prudent. Be a little bit paranoid. And at the end of the day, as long as the math works out, it's going to work out for you. All right, everybody, take care. We will talk to you later. Bye-bye.